Hello, my name is Josh from Cyclops Oz, and today another very detailed forecast update coming your way. This is going to be a big one. We've got a lot to be getting through today, including some more storms and potentially severe ones this weekend and early next week for the southeast of Queensland. Also, some rainfall now on the forecast up in far north Queensland. Nothing much, but definitely something worth a look. Some storms across New South Wales and Queensland later on next week, and the potential for very severe ones as well. And we'll also take a look at a general weather forecast for this weekend around the nation. And all of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please do consider subscribing the support in the videos lately has been much appreciated we're trying to hit 20,000 by the end of the year and all support does help but let's get stuck straight into things now and we're going to start things off back over in southeast Queensland and the northeast of New South Wales where unfortunately more severe storms are dominating the forecast this time they can't get a break but it is that time of the year where they will not be getting a break from severe thunderstorm activity so let's take a look at what is now on the forecast so it's going to be a relatively clear to, uh, day today there could be a few storms firing up across some parts of the northeast of the Sunshine Coast or Northwest rather a bit further inland around Rockhampton and Bundaberg a couple of storms are possible out there later on this afternoon and evening but they will be very uh, widespread and very isolated and also uh, definitely nothing severe expected either. And then from tomorrow as well, we're going to see a bit of an energy pull sweep up from the coast. That cold uh, moist air from the south is going to collide with some warm moist air over on the Sunshine Coast at around midday. And that's going to give way for some thunderstorms, some potentially severe ones as well, across the northeast of New South Wales. Now, later on into the afternoon and into the early evening hours, around 3 or 4 p.m., we could be seeing a couple of thunderstorms and potentially severe ones as well move over the border into the scenic rim and into the southern suburbs of the Brisbane metro area out towards Ipswich and Bow Desert. Uh, the chances are around the Brisbane metro area and the outer suburbs, the th storms will be non-severe, but we could still see a couple of pockets of heavy rainfall and the potential for some medium-sized hailstones as well from storms across the northeast of New South Wales and then into the scenic rim of Queensland. Uh, we could be seeing some uh, mild severe thunderstorms out there. Definitely nothing crazy, but still the chance of said severe thunderstorms outside of the Tambourine area, maybe even extending into the Gold Coast as well, and up as far north as about Brisbane before they peter out later on in the evening hours at around the Brisbane area. But it is going to be the northeast of New South Wales that gets dominated with these thunderstorms on Saturday. You can see outside of Grafton and Glen Innes and Armadale, a pretty widespread expanse of thunderstorms, potentially severe ones as well. So we will need to keep a close eye on this because this is an interesting aspect of the weather forecast this time. Uh, thunderstorms will temporarily ease off on Sunday as well, but they'll return again on Monday from a different weather pattern where we're going to see a trough extend across Queensland and parts of New South Wales. Now, this is going to be more of an inland weather event here. Thunderstorms will fire up across New South Wales and into the south parts of Queensland, but it will be mostly New South Wales that receives thunderstorms here and into the later afternoon and evening hours as well, and the potential for severe storms as well. So we will keep a close eye on that. We'll definitely have a good conversation about that on Monday morning, but it's going to be in Tuesday when we start to see these thunderstorms fire up again for parts of the southeast of Queensland. Again, nothing too dramatic here, but you can see storms still firing up outside of Rolston, Charleville, uh, Roma injured in that sort of area and then a few storms uh, are expected to fire up with showers around the Toowoomba, Brisbane, Warwick, Gold Coast and Tambourine sort of area and a couple of storms also extending into the northeastern corner of New South Wales as well. Again Tuesday non-severe thunderstorms look to be dominating the forecast this time. Nothing crazy is expected but we could still see a couple of cells that threaten to go severe or do go severe with heavy rainfall and large hailstones. The potential for that still is there on Tuesday and then Wednesday a bit bigger of an outbreak is expected. You can see a pretty Pretty big expanse of potentially severe thunderstorms extending from the New South Wales Queensland border deep into New South Wales as well down to about Armadale and Tamworth a few severe storms expected down there and then extending north into Queensland up as far north as about Rockhampton, Billawilla and Agnes Water as well but the majority of the severe thunderstorms will be around the Gympie, Kingaroy, Dolby uh, across towards Chinchilla, Tara, uh, miles and in June sort of area we'll be seeing some storms out there certainly going to be a very interesting thing on the forecast and we'll need to watch Wednesday very closely because this does look like a repeat of what we did see uh, Tuesday just gone I think that's the best day to compare this to we could be seeing a pretty widespread ex expanse of some nasty thunderstorms firing up across the central parts of the Sunshine Coast or at least just a little bit inland of that now Brisbane and the Gold Coast do seem to dodge the worst of the severe thunderstorm chances on Wednesday which is good news because they definitely don't want to see severe weather 
weather like this. That's quite concerning indeed. But there could still be some good showers along the Gold Coast, especially into the northern suburbs of Brisbane around uh, Redcliffe and Moreton Bay. There could be a couple of good showers out there that deliver rainfall accumulations above 30 millimetres. And then up on the Sunshine Coast as well, Maroochydore, Noosa, also some good showers expected out there. But it's going to be inland that cops the most significant rainfall. Now, under the right thunder cell, it looks like up to 50 millimetres is possible here. However, those accumulations could blow out substantially, and it is still about a week away, so there's a lot still in the forecast that's been left uncertain at this time. We will need to watch the forecast very closely over the course of next week just to see what changes and what actually is expected with this weather event. Now, in terms of favourable conditions for these thunderstorms, you can see on Wednesday, even in the morning hours, temperatures are up into the high 20s, early 30s, with high levels of humidity as well in the lower levels and also up into the mid-levels as well across parts of the Sunshine Coast and central areas of Queensland. Prime conditions for thunderstorms to blow up. It is looking like a very good environment. And again, on Wednesday, we've got very high values of convective available potential energy, which is a fuel that thunderstorms need in the atmosphere to go ham. And there's plenty of that available. I mean, these are pretty typical values for this time of the year for a thunderstorm outbreak along the southeastern corner of Queensland. But they're still on the higher end of normal at this time and cause for concern in terms that we could be seeing some pretty big thunderstorms making the most of some very favorable conditions across parts of Queensland. So we will need to keep a very close eye on things because it certainly looks like things are becoming quite interesting. Now, two-day rainfall accumulations across Tuesday and Wednesday. You could almost call this a bit of a thunderstorm outbreak. We're definitely expecting something to happen on Wednesday, at least, and a few storms also expected on Tuesday. So for the purpose of this video, we're going to call this a thunderstorm outbreak. And over the course of this thunderstorm outbreak, some substantial rainfall accumulations are possible. First off, down in towards the scenic room as well, south of Boona and around Warwick, that sort of area, we could be seeing accumulations up towards 30 or 40 millimetres on this forecast here. And then up outside of Kingaroy and Gympie, accumulations between 15 and 30 millimetres look possible as well. Now, this is a forecast here and a low resolution forecast at that, so accumulations are going to swing wildly in both directions. We could be seeing under the right thunder cell accumulations up to 80 or 90 millimetres of rainfall around Kingaroy and Gympie, and we could be seeing accumulations for some locations where they completely miss out and they get nothing or just a few drops here and there. So again, with thunderstorms, the rainfall forecast does remain very uncertain, and it's not appropriate for me to give a proper rainfall forecast until the day of this weather event, but just a heads up, a few more good drops of rainfall are definitely possible Tuesday, and especially Wednesday across this general area of Queensland. Unfortunately, however, it looks like the big rainfall uh, thunderstorms that happen later on in the evening, those squall lines that blow through Brisbane and the Gold Coast and parts of the Sunshine Coast, kind of the aftermath of the severe thunderstorms earlier on in the afternoon, they don't look to materialise on this forecast here, so we're not not expecting substantial rainfall accumulations around Brisbane or the Gold Coast or even along the Sunshine Coast for that matter which I know is going to be pretty disappointing for quite a few people and then up into the Capricorn district as well between Bundaberg, Agnes Water, Gladstone, Rockhampton, Ogmore and even up towards Mackay there's really no rainfall to be talking about these thunderstorms stop well before they get themselves uh, to the coastline which is again pretty upsetting considering that these locations do really need the rainfall um, and yeah they're just not going to get it unfortunately from these thunderstorms which again is pretty upsetting. Uh, however, soil moisture values across this part of southeastern Queensland do remain pretty high, especially for this time of the year. We don't start to see these uh, 90 to 100% soil moisture values uh, until a little bit later on in towards October. But yeah, it's looking really healthy across parts of southeastern Queensland from the storms just gone. But there are locations, especially up towards Gladstone, Rockhampton, Ogmore, that will desperately need some rainfall and they will welcome any drop that they can get. So uh, the rainfall there, unfortunately, not looking like it's going to materialize which is quite disappointing. However, one place where it is going to materialise, and I would like to talk about this right now before we talk about some weather over in New South Wales, is from Sunday onwards, we're expecting an onshore flow to deliver rainfall to central and far northern parts of Queensland. Uh, anywhere between sort of Mackay up towards about Cooktown, including Cairns and Townsville, are expecting the chance of a few good drops from Sunday evening onwards. And you can see here some heavy showers and storms expected to materialise around Mackay, around what's going to be a kind of a weak low pressure system, to be honest. That's probably the best way to describe this and some good rainfall accumulations are possible around Mackay and up towards um, I believe it's Yelbury and Proserpine yeah those areas I really need to polish up on my far north Queensland geography ahead of cyclone season that's for sure but yeah some good rainfall accumulations are possible to the 9am on Monday and then showers and storms will continue through Monday and Tuesday providing some more good rainfall accumulations and potentially up to 80 millimeters of the stuff at some locations around the far north of Queensland now again I know that's not reciprocated on this forecast here you can see 
see some peak accumulations quite high around the Mackay area, up towards 70, 80 millimetres or so. Mackay itself expecting about 20 millimetres of rain, possible between Sunday evening and early Monday morning. And then up into the far north of Queensland, around Innisfail and Tully, some good rainfall now on the forecast there. But like I always say, you can get away with doubling, even tripling this rainfall forecast in some instances, especially outside of Innisfail around the Binder area. So 30 millimetres times two or three gets you to accumulations up towards 80 or 90 millimetres. So certainly some good rainfall is possible up there and we will need to watch things quite closely because it will happen in a pretty quick period of time. Again, 80 millimetres for far north Queensland. It's a drop in the ocean, but it is some good rainfall to start off the wet season. You can already start to see the monsoon trough starting to creep further and further down into the Coral Sea. Things are starting to get quite interesting indeed, and especially later on the forecast period as well. Or maybe I believe it's a little bit earlier on the forecast period. We do have a little bit of a rainfall event expected to happen northeast or northwest rather of New Caledonia. This is quite interesting indeed. It's a new addition to the forecast, and we will keep a close eye on this because it could spin up into a couple of rainfall events across the far north of Queensland. Again, a lot is uncertain with that forecast. Now let's talk about New South Wales. First, starting it off with a bit of a weather forecast for the Bathurst 1000 race. Looking like it's going to be pretty good conditions. A few showers are possible on the uh, outer areas of the Bathurst area towards Orange Parks and Dubbo. A couple of showers are possible into the afternoon hours on Sunday, and a few showers are also possible in the early morning hours around Lithgow, but it looks like Bathurst, for the most part, misses out on the rainfall, and it looks to be a dry race. The track could still be a little bit wet in the morning, but that should dry out hopefully by around 10 or 11 a.m. Uh, wind doesn't look to be a problem at all. The winds are going to be very light around the Bathurst area. In fact, it's going to be pretty pleasant viewing experiences. Uh, temperatures expected to go up into the high uh, teens, potentially the early 20s for areas around Bathurst. So all in all, a pretty pleasant day uh, for the big race. And uh, all I have to say is let's go Ford. I'm really excited to see Ford hopefully pull off a great win, uh, especially as a proud owner of a Ford vehicle. I would love to see Ford uh, bring out a win. Now, let's talk about New South Wales because there are a few thunderstorms now on the forecast and they're going to be happening uh, across board. We've already talked about the ones this week, but later on next week, we've got Friday uh, coming in. We've got a bit of a rainfall event that's expected to swing up across the central parts of New South Wales and that's going to be driven by a low pressure system tracking across South Australia and then into New South Wales and Victoria. Now a lot of rainfall is possible from this weather event especially into parts of Victoria and the southeast of New South Wales. Now this is certainly a little bit of cause for concern especially this time of the year we can see rainfall events like this pipe up and they can drop an awful lot of rainfall across the New South Wales coastline but again this hasn't really got my attention at this time because it is still a week away and a lot of details are going to change. It's how this low pressure system behaves on Saturday. You can see this Saturday the 19th of October we've got a massive band of thunderstorms swinging in here from the north across parts of Queensland and into New South Wales. Now this is just a this is the Rolls Royce setup for severe thunderstorms here and this will fire out some pretty mean thunderstorms if this weather event does materialize here exactly how the forecast is suggesting on Saturday night for parts of New South Wales and even into southeastern Queensland as well. So this is certainly something that I want to keep uh, watching over the next couple of days and certainly something that if you do live across the New South Wales especially into the northern coast uh, parts of the northern interior as well and then into the southeast of Queensland just generally around Brisbane the Sunshine Coast Roma even inland towards Charleville as well I would keep this in the back of your head because these are some pretty gnarly severe thunderstorms that are possible here with this setup and certainly something that you do need to be watching quite closely because these storms here they could take you by surprise quite quickly now I'm going to try and give a bit of an idea on what we're expecting rainfall wise. So it's going to be a uh, low pressure system as we know I and mean, as we're seeing here on this here and they can provide some pretty significant rainfall accumulations and you can see it here on this forecast from Friday onwards fr or Thursday onwards over that four day period you can see some pretty substantial rainfall accumulations are possible with the rainfall core is expected to track which is going to be along the New South Wales Victoria border for the most part and then once it gets itself into the south the eastern coast of New South Wales and the rainfall gets jammed up between the coast and those mountains we're going to see some pretty big rainfall accumulations between sort of Oladola, uh, Wollongong and Aruma, and then down towards Malakuta on the Victorian side of things, rainfall accumulations up to 150 millimetres look possible. And then from the widespread thunderstorm event, which could transform into a pretty big rainfall making squall line, uh, especially into the more mountainous areas of New South Wales, we could be seeing totals between 20 and 50 millimetres pretty widespread across Saturday night into early Sunday morning. So there is a lot of rainfall possible with this weather event. However, I am reserving my forecast and I'm being very cautious at this time because there is 
is still a lot of uncertainty between other forecast models. The Axis G3 is loving this weather event, might I say, but this is a very weird thing to have on the forecast, so we will take this with a heavy pinch of salt. But the GFS is still a little bit more uncertain. Now, I know the GFS has not been a reliable forecast model uh, this year pretty much whatsoever. It's missed quite a lot of forecasts. But again, it is a forecast model that has, over the past 10 years, proved itself to be reasonably reliable. And it's also a forecast model that I like to use to make long-range predictions such as this one where we're talking about a significant weather event more than a week away. So again, we're going to keep this in the back of our head. We're going to keep watching this as the weather models progress, and I'll be able to give you a definite answer on what's expected on the forecast by around Monday or Tuesday next week. It's an interesting weather event and could give way to some pretty, nasty, uh, pretty gnarly and nice severe weather. So we will keep a very close eye on things over in New South Wales. And just before I finish off the video, I would like to take you all over to Western Australia. We're expecting a beautiful day in Perth, and this is just me gloating about the beautiful Beautiful weather that we're going to receive here. 31 degrees, the expected maxima around Perth, potentially warmer in the northern suburbs as well. Those beaches are going to be packed, and by midday, we should be well and truly into the 30s and probably a little bit warmer, like I said, across the northern and the eastern suburbs. A gorgeous day there, and it's going to be beautiful as well across parts of the wheat belt, even in towards the uh, interior as well. It's going to be a nice uh, day, that's for sure. And then up into the high 30s and early 40s for the northern parts of the state. Stock standard for this time of the year, this weather, there's absolutely nothing unusual apart from a bit of a rainfall event across the south interior, south of Warburton and towards the east of the goldfields. Again, nothing unusual for this time of the year. Uh, this is stock standard stuff, but it is now finally starting to warm up over in WA uh, and it is great to see. I'm very, very excited to head outside, wash my car, go to the beach. Hopefully today it's going to be a beautiful one over in Perth. So make sure you do get out and enjoy it. If you are in Perth, it's going to be fantastic indeed. Anyways, that is all for me today. A very detailed forecast update and there's going to be a lot more of them coming your way. And if that's your cup of tea, then make sure you are subscribed to the channel. We release stuff like this every single day. I'm trying to get to uh, 20,000 subscribers by the end of the year and all support does help. And I want to thank everyone for the recent support in the channel. It's been heartwarming to see. So thank you so much for all the uh, words of uh, support, feedback, the likes, the subscribes, everything. It is much appreciated. Anyways, that is all for me today. Beautiful weather happening over in the West. Some pretty stormy weather over in the East. Any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section down below. I'll get back to as many people as I can throughout the course of today. But that is all for me today and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.